Hi guys, it is April 21st. This is Mr. C's Math 8 Quizzes review for today that was in your slideshow. Um, it's a mixed review, so I'm going to start out with the questions that have to do with um, trend lines and scatter plots. Okay, so when you're looking at a trend line or scatter plot, the number of siblings you have in your weight, what's the association or relationship going to be between those? Okay, um, that's a fancy word. Whoops, I just moved my thing around. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to do this. A correlation is a fancy word. Remember, it's a 50 cent word for relationship or association. So what's the relationship between the number of siblings, brothers and sisters you have, and how much you weigh? Unless you have so many brothers and sisters that um, you can't get anything to eat, that there's not enough food, there probably isn't much of a association there. Okay, so think about that as you choose your answer. Okay, question number two. When you're looking at those associations or those correlations, as one value increases, as the Y, as you move further to the right on the Y axis, and then the Y as you go up, that also increases. What's that correlation going to look like? Is it going to look like a line with a positive slope, a line with a negative slope? And then look at this stuff. We don't usually use the words coefficient, and I haven't heard the word causation. So decide, is it positive or negative based on the slope? Okay. The last question on this subject says, the following scatter plot shows Pam's training as she prepares to run a six-mile race at the end of the month. Which of the following would be a reasonable approximation for the length of time it would take for her to run six miles? Okay, so looking at this chart, here is the number of miles. If we take this chart, okay, so there's six miles, and we kind of go up there, my silly, draggy line. Okay, and I come back across. How long is it going to take her? Probably somewhere in the neighborhood of there, right? Okay, so which one of these makes sense? Look at your table or your um, coordinate plane and look at the intervals of that. Can she run it in a shorter amount of time than she did a race in five, than she ran in five hours? Okay, so you can eliminate a couple of these, right? And just look at those and see what you got. Okay. All right, now we're moving on to reviewing a little bit with exponents. Write a product using an exponent. So write this in exponential form. You have the same base, 4. And how many times is 4 a factor? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we write this as an exponent with base 4 and an exponent of 5. Remember? Okay, the rule for multiplying exponents with like bases. Our rule says keep the base. And they are like bases. They're both three. Keep the base and add the exponents. Okay, six through eight. These are questions about our angle relationships. So it says state the angle relationship and find the measure of angle one. So the angle, the relationship of angle one to this angle here. Okay, so we know if we look at them, there are only two relationships our angles can have when we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. Those angles are going to be congruent. They're going to have the same measure. Or those angles are going to be supplementary, and when you add their measures together, they're going to add up to 180 degrees. Let's just take a look at these angles. This is a big obtuse angle. This is also a big obtuse angle. They're the same size. They're congruent, so the angle measure is 110. So we can get rid of this one that says 70. We can get rid of this one that says 70. Now, if I take my little pen, and we'll see how well this works, um, Mr. C in class talks about this relationship as in the cafeteria we have all these tables. And I like this. And all the tables are exactly the same. Okay, so this is a table with four seats. If I were to sit at this C at this table and I were to go to the other table and want to sit in the same exact C, I would sit right here. Those seats are corresponding seats. 
those are corresponding angles, okay? So same seat, different table is the way we think about that. And you can think about that at the cafeteria. We line our tables up. You can find the same seat at each table, okay? All right, so we've got corresponding angles are congruent. Number seven, we know the angle of me the measure of angle seven is 115 degrees down here, okay? So we can go and fill in every single one of these angles. If angle seven is 115, then angle six is 115 because those are vertical angles and vertical angles are congruent. If angle seven is 115, well then angle three is 115 also because those are corresponding angles and corresponding angles are congruent. I can say the same thing about two and six or I can talk about vertical angles or I could actually say that angle seven and angle two are congruent because those are alternate exterior angles. Okay, so notice, I know that four out of my ang five angles are 150, or four out of my eight angles are 115 degrees. To find the missing angle, I can take 180. I can subtract my 115 degrees really badly, and I get a measure of 65. So right now, I know that any angle over here that is not 115 is 65. Okay. Now, the angles that are next to each other on this, I'm going to go through this because I want to make sure you know this. The angles that are right next to each other, see how these angles form a straight angle? That means they're supplementary. We also call those angles next to each other adjacent angles. It means they share a ray between them. So adjacent angles are supplementary. So we see that angles three and four are three and one are adjacent and supplementary. Angles one and two are adjacent and supplementary. Okay, so any of the angles next to each other are supplementary. The angles across from each other are vertical angles. Vertical angles are congruent. The angles that are on opposite sides of the transversal and opposite sides of the um, opposite side, I'm sorry, on the same side of the transversal, those same seat, different table angles are going to be congruent, those corresponding angles. Your alternate interior angles like five and four are congruent. Your alternate exterior angles like seven and two are congruent. So angle seven and two are alternate exterior angles, so they're congruent. So if the measure of angle seven is 115, then so is angle two. Okay, if you can give them those special names, congruent or uh, corresponding, alternate interior, alternate exterior, or vertical, if they have a special name to define where they sit in relationship to each other, then they're going to be congruent. Okay, this is a little review just to make sure you understand. Okay, so this question is asking, what is angle the same as? Or which angles are congruent to angle number one? So angle number one is right here. Okay, if we look at it and we want to name the kind of angle that is, I'm going to erase that so we can look at it though. So if I was going to name angle one, I would say that angle one is an acute angle because it's less than 90 degrees. Okay. So why would be looking for other angles that were less than 90 degrees? Well, here's one across from number th number two. Number three, or number one, it's across the vertex from number one. So number three is a vertical angle to number one. That automatically makes number three a congruent angle. So there's one choice. Okay, let's look at number one again. We've got choice number five. Here's angle number one right there. Angle number five is right there. If I were to do my tables, here are my two tables. If I were sitting at this seat at this table and I were to move to this table, I'd be sitting in the same seat. So those are corresponding angles. 
five is also congruent to number one. Number four, okay, ooh, number four is sitting there right next to number one. And if I draw this, that reminds me that when I put number one and number four together, they share a ray. And when you add their measures together, it equals 180. So those are supplementary angles. They are not the same. That's that other special relationship. So they're not congruent, they're supplementary. Okay, number seven. There's number one. It's a small little angle, a cute little angle. Seven is a big wide angle. It's bigger than 90 degrees. So I can't, I'm going to cue angle and a, an obtuse angle cannot be congruent. Seven is not congruent. It doesn't have a special name or a special relationship with four. So three and five are your answers because they have those special names. Okay, so keep practicing, guys. You're doing a great job. Um, reach out to me if you need any help. Keep looking for your help videos. And um, good luck, Michelle.